Okay, I'm going to record this one now. All right, number 45, we've got to do allocative efficiency on this one. The di diagram above shows the production possibility curve for an economy that produces only consumption and capital goods. All of these are true except what? All right, so looking at these different points, if you take the PPC and divide it at a 45 degree, divide it 50-50, that is where our economy can allocate efficiently or perfectly distribute, okay? So producing at point Z, underutilization of resources, okay? That one is true. So whenever you see this giant bold or cap word, okay, that one is good. That's true. We're looking for things that are true, and then we're going to choose the one that's not true, okay? Combination by Y is unattainable. Yep, it's outside of our PPC, so that one's true. Resources are fully utilized at W and X. If they're on the line, no matter where they are, we are using full employment resource technology. So don't forget about our three keys and then our three points is what we're using as well. So this one's kind of a good review. Okay, producing at point X, right there on the curve, will result in greater economic growth than will producing at point W. X is closer to capital good than it is consumer good, isn't it? So we grow when we produce more capital goods. Because then later, if we have more capital goods, we can hire more workers and make more GDP than we could have previously. So D is also correct. Point X is the most efficient combination of the two goods that can be produced by this economy. This is the most efficient point, isn't it? Okay, we get half of each. So now, that's over here by capital, and that's not true. So E is the correct answer. All right? All right. 46. Assume that we're... Um, required reserve ratio, remember that's our 10%, that's what the banks must keep, a percentage of your demand deposit, okay? Banks keep no excess reserves. That means they loaned it all out, doesn't it? Okay? If they loaned it all out, then they borrow, I'm sorry, and borrowers deposit all loans by, made by banks. So our T-charts have gone all the way out, haven't they? They've gone as far as they can possibly go. Now, suppose you've saved 100 in cash at home and decide to deposit it in your checking account. As a result of your deposit, the money supply can increase by a maximum of. Okay, if we take our, our $100 and a reserve ratio is 10%, 10% of 100 is $10. So remember, required reserves is what they can't loan out, excess reserves what they can loan out, 90. So our money multiplier is 1 divided by the reserve ratio, which is 1 over 10%, which is 1 over 0.1, which is 10. Now our formula is excess reserves times money multiplier. So 90 times 10 is our 900. So I know that they've loaned it all out. Okay, um, I'm sorry, and borrowers have made all their deposits possible. So our answer is 900. If they had asked you for what is the total of the money supply, you just add back that 100 and you'd have your 1,000 bucks. Okay, everybody good with that? All right, okay, 47. Which of the following would be the initial impact on an economy if wages were to increase more than worker productivity? Okay, productivity is the P of pig. Remember we have productivity. Productivity is not how much you're making. It's how much you're making with the same labor and the same materials. How productive are you? Here's a pile of lumber, you have eight hours. How many items can you make? So now all of a sudden, go, all right, you made 10 items yesterday. Here's a raise. You get $5 more per hour. Are you going to make more, any more of them? No. Maybe. Who knows? We can't prove that, yes or no. We can't. Okay? The people at Walmart and Kroger who go get the carts out of the lot, if you give them a raise, I don't know if they'll get more no. in an hour, will they? <laughs> no. I did that once. Okay. So, if wages are going to increase more than the productivity, that is a negative thing for a business. You have to give them more money, but they're not being more productive. As a business, if you are on a set budget, now your supply goes down because you have to spend more on labor for the same amount of product to sell. Okay? So, I'll look through these. There will be no initial, initial impact. That's not true. There is an impact. Okay? Employment would increase. Did anyone get a new job? No, this doesn't give anyone a job. Okay? Price level would increase. No, we're, we're using less resources, aren't we? We're not cutting down any more trees and making them more scarce. So price levels aren't going to increase. 
supply curve would shift to the left, increasing the price level. Okay. Sorry, I meant to say the rest of this. Resulting in excess aggregate supply. Price level goes up because there's less of it available. Okay? That's why C is not a good answer. We don't get more supply when our workers are less productive. Okay? So short run supply would shift to the right. And I'm sorry, shift to the left because it's a decrease and that makes price level go up. And then aggregate demand, I know it's not a demand question. Okay? So I can get rid of all of those. And D is my best answer choice. Okay? All right, and then there's 48. Under a flexible exchange rate system, okay? This is kind of a distractor or a given. Everyone has a flexible exchange rate system. There's no set amount for how many pesos you get when you go to Mexico, okay? It has to change, it has to alter, okay? So every country uses flexible, okay? The Indian rupee will appreciate against the yen when which things happen, okay? So once you see foreign exchange stuff, remember we have our acronym of TRIPS. We have TASTES for foreign goods and services, the real interest rate. When we cover foreign exchange, the real interest rate, a high interest rate attracts savers or investors. Okay, what I mean by savers is I want to put my money into a CD that pays high interest, a savings account that pays high interest. Okay, so under this system, why will people want rupees? That's what appreciate means in foreign exchange. What do people need rupees for? Okay. So basically they're saying, if someone in Japan has yen, they're going to put their yen back in the supply and then they're going to demand rupees. So your job now is to figure out why did they want the rupees. This is our acronym for that. Taste for something, some kind of Indian good or services. Okay. Real interest rate would be high higher in India than it is in Japan. Okay? Income levels are higher in India than they are in Japan. Uh, price levels are better in India. People like to shop where it's cheap. Or people in Japan are speculating that the rupee will go up in value. And they'll want to acquire them and sell them later for a profit. So you can speculate on foreign exchange currency just like you can the stock market. Okay, That's what speculation is. All right. So now, India's inflation rate exceeds Japan. So it's expensive in India, isn't it? So guess what? People in Japan don't need rupees to buy expensive stuff in, in India. India has a trade deficit with Japan. So if the, India has a trade deficit, just think about our exports and imports, right? So if India has a trade deficit, are they importing Japanese goods or exporting to Japan? Importing. They're importing more stuff from Japan, aren't they? Okay. So that rules that one out because they don't need that money for that. Japan's economy enters a recession, but India's does not. Okay, well, if Japan's in a recession, are they going? They're going to import less, aren't they? Because they don't have money, they don't have jobs. All right, so I'm get rid of that one. Japan's money supply decreases while India's money supply increases. All right, so what happens to interest rates in this question on D? If Japan's money supply goes up, what does interest do? It decreases. Okay, if India's money supply increases, what does interest rate do? It drops. So at low interest, where do you want to put put your money? In India or Japan with interest rates now? I want to put it in Japan. Japan has higher interest rates, don't they? Okay, so that one's out. The real interest rate in India increases relative to those in Japan. Guess what? I'm going to put my money in a bank in India and draw more interest. Make sense? Okay, so best choice right there is E.